Good morning, my dear students, my dear parents. I welcome back to school once again. I'm so happy for teaching you this year. Your service and curriculum this year is very easy and very interesting. You are going to learn some topics about the characteristics of the living organisms, the cells and organisms, major organ system classification and relation, human nutrition and balanced diet, the enzymes and the digestive system, plants nutrition, sexual reproduction in plants and human, food chain, the circulatory and the respiratory and ecology. The first lesson, we begin with the first lesson, which is the characteristics of the living organisms. We can differentiate between two different things in the world. If one of them is a living organism and the other one is not living thing, we can differentiate between them by seven characteristics. We can simplify them in seven capital letter in this spread. <clears throat> R for respiration process, E for expression, R for reproduction, G for growth, M for movement, S sensitivity, and nutrition. Respiration process is the release of energy by breaking down of the food inside the body of the living organisms through a chemical reaction. When food is broken down in the form of glucose by oxygen that we breathe, the result of the breaking down process is the release of energy. This energy can be used in different purposes and activities. At the same time, some harmful products are produced as carbon dioxide and water. So don't ever forget, respiration process is the release of energy from the body in the body of the living organism by oxygen, and that happens through chemical reaction. Number two, excretion is the removal of the toxic material or the poisonous materials, waste products of metabolism, and the excess of requirements, the substances in excess of requirements that the body don't, doesn't need. Number three, reproduction, the ability of the living organism to produce offsprings of the same kind. This word equals new babies, new generation of the same kind like the parents. Growth is the increase in the size and mass of the living organisms during its lifetime. The growth process, as a characteristic of the living organism, takes place by increasing the number and the size of the cells. There is a difference between the size of the babies and teenagers and the old ages in the number of the cells. Number five, the movement or the locomotion, both of them are left in the same concept is the ability of the living organism to change their position from one place to another. We can observe the movement of humans and animals, but the movement of the plants is very restricted or even unnoticed. We can imagine the growth of the plants, especially plants, by the growth of root system downward and the root system upward. The characteristics number seven, six first, is sensitivity or irritability. Irritability or sensitivity is the ability of the living organisms to detect and respond to different stimuli surrounding them as light and heat. For instance, if someone switch on the light, you can remove your eyes and your eyelashes are moving up and down. This is due to a reflex action, this is a kind of sensitivity. Or even if you touch a sharp end, sharp needle, or even a knife, you remove your hand away, this is a kind of sensitivity or reflex action. Number seven is the most important one, represented by nutrition, if the obtaining or taking in nutrients of organic substances, mineral oils, raw materials as a source of energy. This energy, as I have mentioned before, can be used in growth, in tissue repair, and absorbing and assimilating them. Living organisms are not alike each other in the way of nutrition. Some of them depend on themselves to make their own food, like plants. Some of them feed on another living organisms. 
and some of them obtain their food by decomposing dead organisms. To compare between them, number one, some living organisms obtain their food by making their own food inside themselves like the producers or even the plants, which are called autotrophic organisms. The autotrophic organisms or the producers are the living organisms, which can make <clears throat> which can make their own food by themselves because they contain chloroplasts. They take carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil to make photosynthesis process. The most famous autotrophic or producers are plants, algae, and some types of bacteria. Don't ever try this word, some, because not all the types of the bacteria can make their own food. Only the type of bacteria that contain or they have in their body structure chloroplast, this type can make their own food by themselves, so they are called autotrophic or producers. Here we have another example of nutrition, heterotrophic. Heterotrophic or consumers are living organisms which cannot make their own food by themselves because they don't contain chloroplasts. So how can they feed? They can feed by three different types, three different ways. Some of them are called herbivore or carnivore or omnivore. The herbivores are living organisms which cannot make their own food by themselves because they don't contain chloroplasts. They can obtain their food by eating plants directly. So they are called plant eaters, consumers or plant eaters, like cows and and cows and buffaloes, camels, sheep, goats, all of them are herbivores. The second type is carnivore, which can make food, cannot make their own food by themselves, but they can obtain their food by feeding on the herbivore, which feed on the plants. You can say that the carnivore are called meat eater, like wild animals as lion and tiger. Some of the consumers can feed on both of them, on plants and animals, which are, are called omnivore like human. Here we have another type of the consumers that they cannot make their own food by themselves because they don't contain chloroplasts. This type are called saprophytic organisms, or saprophytes, or even decomposers. As you have explained last year, the decomposers or the saprophytic organisms they obtain their food from dead bodies, dead animals, food remains. The most popular of them are bacteria and fungi. They cannot make their own nutrients because they don't contain chloroplasts. But they can feed on dead animals and dead plants and the food remains. But also they can sense because they are living organisms. They can excrete carbon dioxide, release carbon dioxide during the respiration process. And they release millions of the spores to produce new fungi.